I think uh, how much your background as a super cool cinematographer help you to, to tell us this story. I love the fact that you, li you use different uh, tones and colors depending, like the US is black and white, the childhood is a little different. Uh, I love that. Uh, it was very, uh, yeah, it establishes different moods and periods. Uh, no, ex you, 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 you nailed it in one. So uh, the idea was um, that uh, we're experiencing the world really through Dylan's imagination. And the remarkable thing about Dylan Thomas is, um, uh, you know, he had a miserable childhood, but he wrote so th then gloriously about the childhood that when you read A Child Christmas in Wales, you think, my God, I want to live in that world. But he lived in this miserable world of... Presbyterian church three times a day, being beaten and so on. So what I thought was I would create, as we often do, this idealized version of his past, which was color, and then his black and white, rather shades of gray present. So you're absolutely right. I, look, I use images like a language. I, I love writing and I love cinematography. So Stephen, why this tribute to, to Dylan Thomas, one of the greatest poets of uh, the 19th, uh, 20th century? Look, I because I saw so much of myself in, in Dylan Thomas. Um, I you know he writes lyrically, um, and I've been writing from a very young age and things. And also, I'm aware of you know the photographic image. Um, I discovered there's ways of seducing people. Um, in fact, I see most of human co communication as some form of seduction. You go for a job interview, you're trying to charm the person you're speaking to. You meet a possible life part life partner you charm and you seduce them, a sexual partner, you seduce them. And when you're a poet or a performer or an artist, it is a group seduction, which is more difficult because seducing one person at a time, not that difficult. Seducing thousands simultaneously is more difficult. And isn't that what beautiful people do? Isn't that what people who are great actors do? Do we know them intimately? Or do we have an idea of them that they then market and sell to seduce us? And Dylan was the first rock star before there were rock stars. So he would go out, there would be women screaming and shouting, um, and men as well, at his performances. He spoke with this elegant, musical, Welsh tonal quality, and he seduced everyone. But did they ever know him intimately? And in my youth, this is something I was doing all the time. I was causing people to like or adore me or respect me or whatever it was. And I realized I had no real intimate relationships because I wasn't putting my genuine self forward, but my performing self. And that's what drew me to Dylan Thomas, if that makes any sense at all. In a way, I think that we are all seducers because we want to be loved at a certain level, right? No question, we want, we want love and validation. And the, the funny thing is about what you just said is we achieve it by seducing, but then it has no value to us because we know we cheated. <laughs> so when we say to a, when we meet a partner and we say, well, really, I'm, I'm not that smart and I'm, I know I'm not good looking and I don't have as much money as you think I do. Do you still want to be with me? That's probably a better way to start a relationship rather than saying I'm fabulous, I'm wonderful, I'm loving, I'm kind, etc. But you're right. We all do it. How important, how important uh, is it for you as a filmmaker? I know you, you've been in many festivals and uh, how important are the festivals as a platform to launch films? And if it's for you a fortunate that the format of festivals have changed due to the famous yeah. pandemic. <laughs> it's kind of been a little bit devastating because I love festivals for lots of reasons. Uh, one of them is just meeting other filmmakers. You know, so often we work in this rarefied world where we have collaborators, but other writers, directors are out there suffering as we are, but they're out in the ether. We don't get to meet them until we get to a festival and we've been exchanging anecdotes and stories and we realize we're all having the same experience. The other thing is audience is hugely important in art, particularly our art, where it relies entirely on audience. To be able to sit with an audience and see their reactions and then actually have a question and answer afterwards. Finally, we get the interaction we desperately desire. Sure, if you do a studio film, they do these tests, you know, these test screenings, all very scientific, but that's more cynical. That's all about increasing box office. Festivals, you really get to hear what people think, not only about your film, but your ideas. 
So I miss it uh, very much. And this film was meant to come out you know, early in the year and then the pandemic came along. So it's, uh, it's been a little bit torturous because uh, you know, we did a little test screening in Tallinn and it got Reese Best Actor, a little test screening in Brazil, and it got called Oscar Worthy by four films, whether it's true or not, uh, four newspapers, you know, I'm flattered. Um, so all don't the- be humble, don't be humble. Uh, I'm being truthful, you know, because I, 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 don't, I don't want to seduce. <laughs> so, so I want to be honest, you know, but I, 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 I hope that the film was worthy of, of what people were saying about it. And then boom, uh, along comes the pandemic. But look, everybody is suffering and many far worse than I am just with my, my, my movie, people's lives are in danger. So uh, it's bad, but it will be better. Yeah, we shouldn't complain. I mean, in You're our right. situation. Let me ask you, uh, well, I love the part of the wife and the kids and the way she was, well, asking for responsibility. Could you talk about a little about if yeah, he was look, responsible or irresponsible, or I'm not judging, I'm just asking. I, I exactly, <laughs> that's like something one of the characters would say in the film. Um, look, uh, you know, Dylan was a great artist. And the other thing, it's the, the piece is a rumination on fame. Um, I've worked on a lot of big films, well known people, and so on. And then I see some behaving very well, most do, some behaving less well. Um, and then I've always tried to do this analysis. Do you judge the artist by the art or do you judge the artist as a, how they are as a person? Dylan Thomas uh, was a womanizer. He was unfaithful to his wife. Um, he was irresponsible. He didn't feed his children. Uh, meanwhile, he was out carousing, drinking, and having a fabulous time. Should we ignore him because he's a bad person but a great artist? Or do we only look at the art independent of the person? And that's what I find uh, you know, absolutely uh, fascinating. And then our moral responsibility as artists. Is our moral responsibility only to our art or are we still people and have moral obligations to the people who are dependent on us? So that's the I, conundrum that I was wrestling with. I think that sometimes the social environment and the responsibilities make you brilliant and you become a great artist, but you don't have to be part of the whole, like you have a different perspective. And judging people like that are, it's not a, too cool, maybe. I don't know. It's not my place. I think, no, I, I, th I think you're, you're right. I mean, look, could, wouldn't it be great if we we're all Tom Hanks? Somebody who succeeds and seems to be like a really nice, virtuous, kind, generous person. Dylan Thomas was not that. I like Tom Hanks. I'm more compelled to study the life of Dylan Thomas because these complexities and inconsistencies are at the heart of understanding the human character. But uh, I, think it, uh, I, I think your film is very realistic. Thank and you. the friendship between Santoro and, uh, and uh, uh, Reese Rice, how do you pronounce it? Reese or Rice? Reese, Reese. Reese. Believe me, I have trouble because it's a Welsh name. How many yeah. people actually speak? Uh, uh, it, Welsh it's very like cool, no? What do you think Carlos represents in his life? Well, Carlos represents so many things. And uh, I don't want to give, let's say, the story away to your viewers because no, no, as no. you know, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a big there's a big twist, but yeah. it's two very different philosophies, particularly about poetry, because this was uh, there was a sea change going on in literature at the time, and Dylan Thompson, in some respects, represents the old poetry, a lyrical, um, a liter literative, elegant, uh, beautiful, um, and I guess Rodrigo, without giving the story away, represents what was then happening in New York and throughout the world, which was the Beats which was the, uh, the, the new generation of poets, the Ginsberg and so on, who are more about seeing the world as it was, as it, as it was then, uh, specifically uh, dealing with vulgarities and the uh, ordinariness of the world. So the language would no longer be so elegant or vainglorious. It would be actually about the commonplace. And sometimes, particularly in Ginsberg, just vulgar and earthy and crude. But the poets, of course, felt we're writing about the world as it is, not as you wish it to be. And this is the dichotomy at the center of Dylan Thomas about the world that he's existing in, as you pointed out, in black and white, and the world as he wishes it to be, the idealized world of color, of the child's Christmas in Wales, of everything being lovely and glorious and, and have make some logical sense. I think, uh, I think uh, language is very powerful and words are very powerful. 
and in integrating the way we talk in the street is a, it's a respecting the evolution of our own history. That's beautifully observed, and I will steal that if I may. But that's, I think that's absolutely true. I think. Today they, I don't know what happened. I had a good breakfast. <laughs> I'm not always like this. Or maybe you're inspiring me. No, you're, you're funny because the same, when you're, when you're riding, I wake up and suddenly say, I'm rolling. I'm thinking, I think I'm brilliant. The next day, I can't think of two words. And Today I'm thinking, I feel co really cool. Like, what did I eat, you know? Did I take the right vitamin yesterday? Uh, it was the walk I did. And we can never quite trace the origins of, of, uh, of inspiration. But I think what you say is, is uh, absolutely correct. Yeah, it's true. And the film reflects that. Thank you.